Hi, here's Bernardo again. AI adoption in business still has a big gap between ambition and execution. According to the global survey elaborated by the Boston Consulting Group and the MIT in 2017, less than 40% of the interviewed companies reported to have an ongoing AI strategy. Although more than 80% responded they believe that artificial intelligence provides a real competitive advantage. The next question we should ask is, has this gap decreased since then? The answer is no. A new survey by the Boston Consulting Group and the MIT shows that in 2018, the pioneers were still increasing their investment in AI, actually widening the gap with other companies. In this video, we are going to show you these stages of AI adoption in business, which actions in terms of data acquisition and implementation strategies can be used, and finally, some new tools that might help companies to scale up their AI applications. The early implementers of AI are positioning themselves to reap the benefits of AI at scale. Frequently, focusing on revenue generating activities over cost savings. This group of companies that both understand and practice AI accounted for less than 20% of the recent survey. Examples of companies that can be classified within this group are the so-called AI first companies. We covered this in one of our previous videos. Also in the pioneers group are the companies implementing some kind of vertical or horizontal strategy. For example, the core of a horizontal strategy is to build an AI product or platform that can be used by many industries to solve problems more efficiently than we could before AI. Alternatively, a vertical strategy tries to match one specific industry with hair on fire problems that are suitable for AI. Many examples of these strategies are present in the annual list elaborated by the MIT 35 innovators under 35. Around half of them are AI-based innovations. Next, we have two groups that have interest in AI, but differ in terms of their engagement with the technology, the investigators and the experimenters. The group of investigators is researching and educating its workforce about the technological possibilities, but they are not actually running experiments in order to test which applications should be scaled up. This usually happens because of blockers like not having human resources to lead and implement the first experiments, or not having a data acquisition strategy that maps where and when to obtain data from customers, for example. Then we have the smallest group, the experimenters. They are learning by doing. These companies usually perform a number of small tests in a control environment, but with limited understanding of it. This happens because of blockers like not knowing how to match a business problem with the appropriate AI solution to test, or not improving the quality of the assumptions to be tested. The last group is composed by those companies neither experiment nor investigating AI applications. Some of them are consciously inactive here because they simply don't need AI in their current business model or because they believe that a competitor would not be able to discover an application earlier than them. But if your company is still in the passive group, a good start is to have a look at the priorities highlighted in this PwC report. We covered most of them during the last year in our videos on personalization, trust, workforce and data acquisition. Check them out after this video. If you need more insights specifically on data acquisition, check this HBR article that summarizes the elements of defense and offense data strategies. There is also the guide to customer data provided by who.io. Recently, Lending AI launched their AI transformation playbook. There, you find a summary of the steps towards AI implementation at a company level, such as developing the AI strategy itself, building an in-house team, and training the workforce to understand and execute. Other core priority is building a portfolio of reusable building blocks. This supports the fact that most of the data science projects are not actually deployed into production or have at least part of them reused to solve new problems. Executives in the PwC survey said that developing AI models and data sets that can be used across the organization is the most important capability they would focus on in 2019. To help you on this, keep an eye on these two new tools offered by Google that try to make AI simpler and more user-friendly for the business. The first is AI Hub. It's like a one-stop destination for plug-and-play machine learning content. It offers two significant benefits. First, it makes the machine learning resources developed by Google publicly available to all businesses. And second, it provides a private, secure hub where enterprises can upload and share machine learning resources within their own organization. Businesses can reuse pipelines and deploy them into production with just a few steps. But companies also need a way to build 
build and package these machine learning resources, just like an app, so then they are useful for the other parts of the organization to use. Kubeflow Pipelines is a good solution for this, because it makes machine learning applications reusable to other areas of an organization. In summary, this video presented you lots of summaries, guides, and tools to help you to judge potential AI applications in your business. We hope you now better understand the current state of AI in business. Please leave your comments below and see you next time.